Hi, so this video will be about my field work and field work aspect of my PhD project. But before I get into that, I should probably explain uh, more about what my project is actually about. So, the idea of the project is to understand the relationship between temperature and the release of dissolved organic carbon from soil. Soil is a really important store of carbon, and it actually stores more carbon than the atmosphere and from the normal vegetation in the world combined. So any loss of dissolved organic carbon from the soil is actually really important and can have potentially large and currently unquantified uh, effects on the climate as a whole. So this is a really quite prevalent issue globally at the moment. So you might wonder how caves actually come into this, how do they relate in any way to the release of uh, dissolved organic carbon from soil. Well the idea is that speleothems, which is a generic term for any calcium carbonate deposits in caves, so stalagmites and stalactites and flowstones, um, can provide a detailed archive, a detailed annual archive of dissolved organic carbon in terms of the amount of dissolved organic carbon and the characteristics, the chemical characteristics of the dissolved organic carbon through time. And because these uh, speleothems can be deposited over potentially hundreds of thousands of years, <coughs> in fact we know that they can, you can then build up an extremely long record of dissolved organic carbon um, which has been released through time and try and link the release of that dissolved organic carbon to temperature change. So because we want to understand the effects of temperature on the release of dissolved organic carbon from soil, we're using the thermal gradient of New Zealand um, to, to understand that effect. So we've sampled previously uh, Waipuna Caves in the central North Island and I was involved in removing the speleothems from that site. Previously before I arrived my supervisor and a couple of other uh, academics removed speleothems from a couple of caves in the South Island and as part of my recent piece, uh, field work we revisited those caves to learn more about the hydrology in those areas. So in total in the South Island we visited three caves, one in uh, the Nelson region on top of Mount Arthur and then two caves in uh, Fjordland National Park which is on the southwest of the South Island as well. So today we're in Calcite Cave which is on Mount Luxmore in Fjordland National Park in New Zealand and we're collecting water samples um, that have been collecting over the past couple of days and we're also collecting our drip loggers which have been left here since February last year so a full 12 months now and the reason for doing this is to provide a sort of information on hydrology of the cave and in terms of the water sample that will give us a good indication of the geochemistry and it will allow us to compare um, the carbon in the uh, water sample versus the soil and in the speleothem so as you can see here we have some speleothems and we also have, I hope you can see, a drip logger as well. So visiting those caves was really useful for me to see field sites that were a pivotal part of my uh, PhD. So although we probably only spent maybe two or three hours in each cave, it was really great to explore them and get a feel for the place um, before I crack on with lab work and analysing samples from uh, the cave system. So. After um, my field work in the caves, I travelled up to Lake Ohau, which is in Canterbury. Uh, I was invited by one of my supervisors who works for GNS Science, which is a Crown Research Institute in New Zealand. And they had a climate, um, they had a very large project called the Loka Lake Ohau Climate History Project. And essentially they were removing sediment from the bottom of the lake up to a, a depth of 80 metres and they expect to be able to reconstruct 17,000 years of climate history to almost, with an almost annual record. Uh, this is a really interesting project for me because I've never seen such a large scale project in action um, to see the amount of people involved in that project, to see a 27,000 kilogram barge in action was really, really cool as well and it was a beautiful place too. So that was really enjoyable for me and it's worth checking out um, search on the internet for the Lake Ohau Climate History Project. They've got quite a lot of media attention 
and it was really great for me to go and see that. Um, if they can reconstruct 17,000 years of past climate, they can potentially understand what the climate may do in the future, and this is obviously important for a lot of different stakeholders in New Zealand, from the agricultural industry to the energy sector as well. So it's a really, really valuable project. So after my three weeks of field work in the South Island, I was pretty tired and it was a great experience but I'm, I'm sort of glad to get back to Hamilton and be able to crack on with some lab work. Field work is an important part of my project but um, I've now collected quite a large number of speleotherm samples so it's important to get on with lab work and get on with analysing those samples and in my next video I'll talk about the ways in which I'll go about doing that. And I'd just like to finish this video off with a few nice pictures from when we got the helicopter up to Fjordland, um, up to the, to the top of Mount Luxmore for Calcite Cave and Dave's Cave. And I'd also like to leave a picture um, of Lake Ohau as well.